As we prepare to hear the words of Holy Scripture, let us open our hearts, let us welcome the Spirit in. May these words be food for our own journeys. Our first reading this morning is from Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 7 through 8, and 29, verse 11. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall, they shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots to the stream. It shall not fear when it co heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future full of hope. Our second reading this morning is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your path. And finally, our last reading this morning is from Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Here ends our scripture reading for this morning. It is a gift from God for the people of God. I now invite those who are able to please stand and join me in singing hymn number 16 in the Book of Favorites. The Book of Favorites you'll find is a small book in your pew. Please be seated. Let us pray. O oh, loving creator, we have gathered here today on this beautiful Sunday. We have gathered as your faithful people to hear the words of scripture, to be moved by the power of the Holy Spirit, to know that we are yours and to rejoice that we are the children of God. As we gather here, O oh Lord, we ask that you will be with us, and we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts will be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our rock and redeemer, now and forever. Amen. I discovered today that since I'm not robing, I don't have a pocket anymore for my head mic, so forgive me for trying to use this one. I well, hope I don't trip myself while I'm at it. We are here. Oh my goodness. We have been planning, those who've been on the sabbatical, com sabbatical committee, for a mighty long time, it seems like. It is also amazing for me to sit here and say it's been almost seven years that we have been walking together. And as I thought of what should I say today, I started thinking about little pieces of wisdom that have come to me during this journey. So this is gonna be a little bit of an odd sermon. It's more of sharing wisdom. This week, as I was standing, waiting for my daughter to get off of the elementary school bus, I could hear those words. No more teachers, no more books. You know all of that. They were, yay, so happy school was out for the summer. They were thrilled. And my daughter came in and she sat down and she said, well, my teacher gave me this work. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to do it all now. And I thought, wait a minute. You're supposed to wait and do that over the course of the summer, not just sit down and get it all done at one point. And I started thinking about that. And then another thought came to me this week. When I was in OCHEM, which is really unique because we actually have people from OCHEM here today, but when I was in OCHEM, I remember this woman telling me that one of the best things about growing up was the fact that her father was a history teacher. And on the, the last day of school, they would get their camper all packed up and they would head out for who knows where. And they would sit there and there were three kids in the family and they would have their map. And dad only rule was you had to go visit something with historical significance. 
That's pretty easy, isn't it? And she said it was the most wonderful childhood because she would go on adventures all summer long and they would pull in about a week before school was about to start and they would have had their journey. Thought about that. How wonderful that freedom is to just be able to say, let's go. Let's see where the spirit leads us. I also remembered a professor I had in seminary I remember the first time I sat down with her and she said, okay, so what's your plan? I'm going to take this the first, the first semester, this the next semester. I'm going to do winter school. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to graduate here. And she said, and where's the spirit? Oh, the spirit? I don't see that on my class list. The spirit. I started thinking about that. Sometimes when we plan so much, we forget to allow God in. So one of my pieces of wisdom that I'm carrying with me this summer is I am going to be doing a eight course program so I can be certified in senior adult ministry at the end of this time of sabbatical. I am going to Florida and I am going to be visiting different denominations and looking at churches that have successful senior adult ministry, but I'm allowing time for prayer. I'm allowing time for the spirit. I'm allowing time to see where God is going to guide me. And I ask you to do the same. I think our tendency when a pastor goes on sabbatical are sort of like my fourth grader. Get all the work done fast and then kick back. Or to just say, I'm not going to do it until, oh my gosh, school starts tomorrow. I better finish up and read those last pages, right? Does that sound like anybody, Doug? Doug, were you one of those children? <laughs> yes. Okay. So what I'm asking you to do is to not do that, but to think about what is it that this congregation wants to do when I'm away? Some of the people on church council have been talking about starting small group ministries, looking at our congregation, breaking them down into neighborhoods so that we can build fellowship with one another. I ask that you would pray for that. I ask that you would help out if you're asked to participate. I ask that you would allow the spirit to guide that to become whatever it needs to become here in this church, to meet the needs here in this church. Don't plan every little last second. And the day before I come back, don't try to put it together. <laughs> but let's try to let the spirit move us. The Spirit brings us into amazing and wonderful places. I'm not sure where it's going to go, but I'm hoping that the Spirit will guide me. Also, I'm going to ask you for discernment. Discernment. It's one of those words that pastors use and theologians use, and what on earth does it mean? It's one of those words that's really hard to describe to somebody. Well, I know when I discern, it's sort of praying for God to speak to you. It's asking the Spirit to be with you. It's reading scripture and going, oh, maybe this is what I'm meant to do. It's listening to those around you to try to discern, to try to figure out what it is that this mysterious and wonderful God wants in your life and wants in this life as a community. Unfortunately, we cannot just pick up the phone and dial 411 and say, God, what on earth are you thinking? What do you want me to do right now? What do you want for this church right now? We have to discern. We have to listen to God's still small voice. And so I would ask that during this time that we are away from each other to discern where do you want, Lord, this church to be? What new things would you like us to do? How can we minister to one another as a church family? What are our gifts and how can we build upon them? That seems like a lot to ask, but really it's thinking, it's reflecting on the time we've spent together as a congregation and it's looking forward. Where does God want us to be? Unfortunately, we not, can't usually get that answer instantly. It takes time. It takes prayer. It takes thinking. It takes talking among yourselves, sharing ideas, listening to each other. Food for the journey. Listen to God. Don't schedule every single thing in. And also know 
you can survive without me, Barbara. <laughs> Barbara has come to me, I think, the last three weeks and said, I don't know what I'm going to do without you, Victoria. I can tell you I'm leaving you in the hands of God. Very good hands. You're, the, <laughs> you're fine. And everybody here, we're called to be disciples to one another. We're called to be the body of Christ to one another. I always say this is not the church of Victoria Snow. This is the church of Jesus Christ. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Jesus is the one that calls us to gather here every single Sunday. Jesus is the one who guides us and left us the power of the Holy Spirit to guide us and to show us where we want to be. We are in very good hands. We are in the hands of the Lord. And it's our time to stand strong in our faith. It's time for us to pray and to celebrate that we are Jesus's and that we will be taken care of. So relax, pray, listen for God's wisdom, hear God's still small voice and rejoice in one another. Reach out to one another. You are the body of Christ. You can do anything together. May you have a wonderful, blessed sabbatical, just as I hope that I will grow and be able to bring more information back here. Blessings to all of you on our journeys away from each other and when we come back. Amen.